Hopefully this is working here. Lesson 7, 1, estimate sums and differences of fractions here. So uh, I'm just going to go over this lesson here fairly quick. It says that Jack needs about one and one half yards of string. He has three pieces of string that are different lengths. And it says, without finding the exact amount, which two pieces should he choose to get closest to one and one half yards of string? So these are the three lengths that they give us to, to choose from. Half a yard, a third of a yard, and seven eighths of a, of a yard. And um, if we want to get close to one and one half, uh, most of you probably recognize that we would use these two pieces of string. Uh, one half is exactly the half that we're looking for. And seven eighths is pretty close to one. And so that would be one, one and one half uh, approximately. I'm not worried about the bottom of the page. You can put a line, line through that. Okay, turn the page. Now we're on page 270. And uh, it's another example. This fellow was welding two copper pipes together to repair a leak. And the question is, um, is the new pipe closer to a half a foot in length or one foot? It's asking, which is it closer to? And, and you can see that if you look at their steps here, that it's closer to one half in the, in the length, okay? So, uh, I'm not worried about the bottom of this page here. You can put a line through that. And then on page 271, I'm not worried about one and two. How sweet is that? Let's look at, uh, let's look at three and, and four together here. And let me explain to you what they want you to do, because they're going to ask you to do more of this in the lesson. And it says in three and four, use the number line to tell if each fraction is closest to, and these are your three choices, zero, one half, or one. And so 11 twelfths. Well, 11 twelfths, if we were to put it on a number line, that means we would divide from here to here into twelfths. There'd be 12 little parts, and 11 twelfths would be very close to one. And then one sixth, okay? So we would divide this up into six parts. And if you finished your chart that we were working on earlier, if I can find mine, who's got a chart that the sixth are done? Miss Dean, let me see yours. So one sixth. So let's look at Miss Dean and see what she's got going here. So here's the six. So there should be six squares. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here's one of them colored. And where would, um, well, here is zero. Okay. And a half would be, um, would be right about there. This is equivalent. That's half of it. And then here would be a hole. This would be one. And so if she just colored in the first one sixth, what's it closest to? Well, it's obviously closest to zero. So in this one here, we would just put zero. And I just want to point out again, and I said this earlier to you guys, I wasn't looking for perfection when you did these. It's obvious that, you know, the second one sixth is much larger than this one sixth. But she has the right idea there, and that's really all I'm, all I'm looking for. And then it says, estimate the sum of 11 twelfths and 1 six. Well, 11 twelfths is, is 1 plus, what, 0 equals 1. That's all they're asking you to do there. Okay. And the next one, um, 14 out of 16, that's what? That's pretty close to 1. And five um, out of eight, uh, that's, that's pretty close to one half, all right? Now, notice in this one, 
they're asking about difference. And what do we have here when we're talking about difference? We have subtraction. And so one, subtracting one half is one half. Now, let me ask you, because we were talking about decimals earlier in equivalent fractions. If somebody had written 0.5 as their answer, would that still be correct? Yes, yes it would. Yeah, one half is equivalent to 0.5. All right. Down at the bottom of the page, let's take a look here. It says, in five, use a number line to tell if each fraction is closest to, again, there's three choices, zero, sorry about that, let's get this a little more centered, zero, one half, or one. And then in six through 11, estimate the sum or difference by replacing each fraction with zero, one half, or one. So, um, Let's see here. Seven eighths is closest to what? One. Yeah. Five twelfths is closest to what? Yeah, closest to a half, because five twelfths is really close to six twelfths, which is the same thing as one half. And then it says estimate the difference. So it'd be seven eighths subtracting five twelfths, so that's one subtracting one half, and that's going to be one half. And let me do number six for you, or with you. Nine tenths is really close to what? One. One, One plus five six. What's that really close to? One. Yeah. Okay. So the answer to number six would just simply be two. Now notice this one was addition. There are some that are subtraction. So don't just think you're adding them all together. All right. Number 12, let's take a look at that here. Number 12 is kind of complicated. So, um, so that we're using the same <coughs> numbers. Let me show you what I want you guys to do here. Okay, so it says, name two fractions that are closer to one than one half. That are close to one, closer to one than one half. So seven eighths is closer to one than it is one half. And um, nine tenths is closer to one than it is one half. And you guys want to write those down. And then it says, name two other fractions that are closer to a half than they are to zero or to one. So here's a half. So I need to come up with a fraction, two fractions that are pretty much right in that range there, closer to one half than they are to zero or one. And so in the other class, we came up with five elevenths. That's pretty darn close to one half. And then somebody said four tenths. And again, that's pretty close to one half. It's closer to one half than it is zero or one. And then the last one, it says find two, oh, I'm sorry, then, um, and then two other fractions that are closer to zero than to one half. So closer to zero here than they are one half. So we're looking for something, you know, right in this range here. And so again, the other class, they came up, somebody said one seventh. And then somebody said uh, two thirteenths. All right. So these two here, these first two are closest to one. These two fractions right here are close to one half. And these two fractions right here are closest to zero. And then it says, find two of your fractions that have a sum uh, of about one and one half. So two of these fractions that have an approximate sum of one and one half. So let me pull a stick here. Uh, Miss Maldonado, what two fractions might you pick that would have a sum? Sum is a total or an addition of one and one half. Okay. 
So five elevenths is about a half, and four tenths is about a half. So that would that would be equivalent to one. So you've got one of them right. Okay. We need a different fraction other than the. Uh, so let's say you picked five elevenths. So how about five elevenths plus? What's another fraction, Miss Pearson? Um, seven eighths. Yeah, you can use seven eighths. Is a or I wouldn't say equal to. This symbol means approximately when it's a little squiggly line, and you could just put one and one half because that's what they're asking us to to do. Five elevenths plus seven eighths is approximately one and one half. Okay. Um, how are we doing on time here? Doing okay. So let's see here. Um, how would you estimate whether 27 over 50 is closer to one half or one without using the number line? Okay, so we can't use the number line, but that's okay. I look at 27 over 50, and, and I'm thinking that's really close to this. And what's that equal to? One half. Yeah, one half. So it's obviously closer to one half. And, and you could say, um, it says explain, uh, because 27 over 50 is very close to one half. Because it is. It's only two fiftieths away from one half. Now, let me pull a stick here and pick on somebody here. Miss Beckler, if I wanted to know what 27 over 50 was, where is Miss Beckler? Where is she? There you are. 27 over 50 was in a decimal form. How would I do that? Uh, divide what by what? Divide, um, uh, <coughs> you got part of it right. Part of it right. You would divide. Let me get my calculator up here. Where's my calculator? There it is. Okay. I'm going to divide 27 by what? What'd you say? Um, one, uh, no, you said it. You started to say it. 50? Yeah. And what's so in decimal form, what's 27 over 50 equal to? 54. 54. 0.54. 0.54. So remember, anytime you guys want to change or need to change a fraction into a decimal, you divide the top by the bottom. Every time. Okay? That's how you do it. All right. Uh, 14, Katie made a bag of trail mix with a half a cup of raisins, three-fifths cups of banana chips, and three-eighths cups of peanuts. About how much trail mix did Katie make? Well, you're going to have to add those three together. And just a quick review, because some of you needed it, or at least in the other class they did. I don't know if you guys do or not. So a quick review. If I was to add, let's say, two-fifths, okay, plus, um, let's say, one-fifth. If the denominators are the same, all I have to do is add the numerators. So it would become what? Three-fifths. That's easy-peasy. But now... If the denominators are different, what if it was two-fifths and I was adding, um, let's say here, uh, four-tenths, okay? Then you have to get equivalent denominators before you can add those together. And so you need to come up with a denominator that both of these numbers will fit into. Well, that's pretty easy. It's going to be ten. And so I would say 10 goes into 10 once, and 1 times 4 is 4. 5 goes into 10 twice, 2 times 2 is 4. Add the two 4s up, and I get 8 over 
10. Okay? So some of you re may remember that from fourth grade. I wasn't really sure. So there's a really quick review. And I can actually reduce this. Um, and this would become four fifths because I would divide each number by two. And I don't know if any of you knew that or remember that from last year. So you're going to have to add up one half, three fifths, and three eighths together. And then you'll figure out about how much uh, trail mix did she make. But I'm, here's what I'm going to say is they're probably asking you to um, estimate one or zero and one half and one so you have to look at each one of these well one half is going to be one half three fifths what's that closest to one. yeah that's closest to one what's three eighths closest to one half. half again i think okay because it does say about not the exact amount All right. 15 okay um, the annual mug race, which I'd never heard of before, is the longest river sailboat race in the world. The event runs along the St. John's River that they have list, listed here. It says it's 310, the river is 310 miles long. About how many times as long as the race is the river? Well, the race right here, they tell us. It's 42 miles long. So, um... 310, what's, a, what's an easy number to make 310 into that we could work with? I heard somebody say it. 300, 300 yeah. So I'd make 300, make it 300. And then 42, we could make that 40. And so you're just dividing that. And that'll tell you about how many times um, that length of race would fit into that river. That's, that's what they're looking for. And then finally, part A and B here. It says, Steve is making breakfast. The recipe calls for seven-eighths cups of milk for grits and three-quarter cups for biscuits. He has only two cups of milk. Does he have enough to make his breakfast? Well, he needs seven-eighths of a cup of milk, which is just almost one cup, but not quite. And then he, he needs three-quarters of a cup of milk, which is not quite a cup. It's three-quarters of a cup. Well, both of those are less than a cup. So does he have enough milk? Yes. Because both amounts are less than one. Okay. And then it says, if he has enough milk, and he did, about how much milk will he have left? If he doesn't have enough milk, how much will he need? Well, that doesn't matter. So, um, so again, seven-eighths is pretty close to what? One. One. Three-quarters, actually, that's right between one-half and one. So I would probably just call it um, a half. And then you would need to figure out about how much milk he will have left. Well, you'd have to add those two together. And then if he had two cups, how much would he have left? I'll let you figure that out. So that's it. That's your lesson and homework for today. We have just enough time, I think, to do something else in this video here. Wow, that was a long one, almost 20 minutes. <laughs>